All right, well, I'm very excited about this next guest. As I, as I mentioned at the outset, I've got uh, a first yet again. Hopefully every week we can have some kind of first um, instead of just a repeating I'm not ready. Uh, this is the first thing I was mentioning was that I, I hadn't met my guests uh, prior to the show. We've, we've reached out beyond my circle of friends on my phone. Um, and this, this uh, world, as I mentioned also, uh, that Alex uh, comes from, is uh, one that I am just got my toe into the shallow end of. Actually, I fell in head first, face first, into the shallow end. <laughs> Um, and I'm having the time of my life, so I'm most excited. Please welcome Alex Albrecht. Thank you so much. No, please. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Thanks for doing an, an internet show. Right? <laughs> well, you know, let's... Um, and thanks for the end of days. Did you enjoy that? Cup. That we, One of my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, actually. Really? It, yeah. Well, just, not just because I get set on fire a couple no, of times? it's the beard that he's rocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You and, never see Arnie with a beard. Mm -hmm. Especially not nowadays. Well, it was dramatic acting for Arnold in that film, <laughs> which is why ultimately the film doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> he's governor now. I can't he hurt is, him. Yeah, I can't hurt him, he's even if I control. wanted to. It's like he's some sort of mechanical robot from the future. You know what's amazing um, about him is uh, how, how uh, first of all, he made his fortune before he got into movies and bought up half a Santa Monica real estate just from oh, his... Yeah. from his, uh, The gyms, uh, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the gyms and also his bodybuilding career. Mm -hmm. Business savvy beyond belief, so hang in there, California. He might be able to fix us yet, but also the most politically savvy person I've ever met. Really? Like crazy. On the set of End of Days, I'm only mentioning this because you... Brought you, the cup. You suggest you <laughs> like that movie. Um, some crew member came up to Arnold and I while we were discussing whatever in between setups, and the crew member said, Hey, Arnold, this is my uh, cousin visiting from Tel Aviv. And Arnold stopped the conversation, stopped what he was doing, addressed the person from Tel Aviv, and said, Yeah, you just had your mayoral race there. And, uh, and uh, I'm so, I was not surprised at all but that uh, so-and-so won because they had a much better uh, background in the politics. And, and named all three candidates. Why the other two didn't win. Jeez. Really? You got that in the hip, back right, pocket? Right. The mayoral race of Tel Aviv? <laughs> What are you talking about? So that's amazing. I think California's in much better uh, hands than than they think. Mm. We think. Um, let's talk about your hands and why you didn't wash them before you sat down. No. Yeah, well, because I came straight from the bathroom. And that's uh, how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so I'm um, brand spanking new to this world. This world's yes. been a, a part of your life for how many years now? Have you been uh, uh, thriving online? Uh, let's start there. Thriving. Uh, well, I've been doing online stuff for about four years. Okay. I think maybe four and a half years. And yeah. before that, it was um, uh, I, on G4? Uh, yeah, well, it was Tech TV at the time. I mean, it was, it was a weird period of time there because Comcast bought Tech TV, which was up in San Francisco, right. merged them with their gaming channel, G4, blah, 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 history people don't give a crap about. And uh, I do. Wait a minute. What was that? Yeah, that was <laughs> the history part. That was okay. talking. G4 and Comcast. Uh, no, yeah, so the, so the Tech TV got merged. Tech TV was just this sort of little uh, cable company about computers. I mean, it was, it was actually really a shame to see it so kind of go the way of the dodo because it was, I actually am a computer programmer. I have a computer science degree. That's how I kind of got sucked into this whole internet stuff. And uh, love Tech TV, watch it all the time. And they moved down to L.A. And I also, an actor, lived in L.A. for a couple of years and did a bunch of improv around town and um, met this girl at a wedding, and she was like, oh yeah, I produced for uh, 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 Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. And I was like, what? I've always wanted to be a host on that. I'm com computer science improv background. It's a live show. Yeah. Like, what? I Perfect. should totally host this. But I don't want to live in San Francisco. It's, that's like death of acting career, right? I mean, it would be fun, but... I certainly moved from there to here, yes. There, that's how it works. Yeah. And so she goes, oh, that's funny. We just got bought by Comcast. We moved to L.A., and one of our hosts for the screensavers, our daily hour-long live show isn't coming with us, you'd be perfect. By the name of Leo? Uh, no, it was actually after Leo left. Uh -huh. It was Patrick Norton, who oh, right, now right. does an online show with uh, one of uh, the companies I work with, right. which is fun. So then, yeah, and I did that for two months, and then they canned me, along with a lot of other people, and it was like, cool. You're beginning and end two months later. Two months later, yeah. And as my mom uh, graciously says, I am more famous for being fired than ever hosting the show. Because <laughs> people were just warming up to me. They were like, right. who's this kid with a freaking high voice trying to be funny on TV? Where's Patrick? You mm. know what I mean? And they just started to warm up to me when I got canned. And they were like, whoa, 
we didn't say we liked him, but we definitely didn't say we were ready for him to go. You know what I mean? So there's like a big up war. And so oh, I, wow. I kind of became this symbol of everything that was happening with tech TV going away. And I had only been there for two months. I lived in LA. I, like they moved a bunch of people down from San Francisco that got fired. So for me, as an actor in LA, I got a job that gave me three months work wow. and they gave me a month and a half severance pay. And I was like, you don't realize how good this is. Yeah. <laughs> like, fire me every day. Are you kidding me? Right. I get a month and a half off and you're still paying me? This is amazing. Best gig ever. And then uh, my buddy Kevin, who, uh, Kevin Rose, who I, I co hosted the screensavers with, um, started a website called dig.com, which is now this big, huge right. social news. You know, started the whole social news slash social media. Yeah crap storm that is web 2.0 you know yeah, I mean? yeah and i still i literally remember the day he came in and was like i got this idea for a website i'm like yeah what yeah he's like you submit a story and it sits on this pile of stories and if you like it you click a button and you dig it up the pile and i was like yeah good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> should have given him money yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but anyway so yeah and then we started uh we started doing an internet show uh, a dignation about four and a half years uh, years ago and and uh and it started with you guys sitting on a couch with computers on your laps yeah. and you're reading stories from dig.com i mean literally what it was was we knew we wanted to do something together there was i mean he, he and i just had a really great chemistry uh, hosting together and um they, he started a company called Revision 3, which is, does online television stuff, and they had a show that they launched with. Um, and uh, he was like, I want to do something with you. And, and it was when iTunes came out with um, uh, podcasting built into iTunes, uh, which was the big yep. shift for yep. this, all of this stuff. Everything yep. inside, all this, it's all because of that day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Kevin called me all hot and bothered at like midnight, and I was like, roll over in bed, I'm like, what the psh. And then called me at like 8 a.m. the next morning, and I was like, Something, some craws in his bonnet, because mm. I talk like somebody from the 1800s. Nice, nicely uh, done, sir. Every once Goes in a while. with the hair, I Thank understand. You. And uh, so I pick up the phone, he goes, Look, iTunes is coming out with podcasting, we should do a podcast. And I go, All right. And that was a Tuesday, and Thursday we shot our first episode of Dignation. Jesus. And we're just like, Screw it, what should we do? I don't know, let's sit on a couch. All right. Let's and do you drink beer, beer every? We, we, it used to be every episode, and then... Too much pressure. Well, we've done... We just shot our 202nd episode, so that's a lot of beer. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and there have been some memorable moments. Yeah. Uh, Reno, Nevada being one of them, where I don't recall half of the show and don't remember much until waking up on the bathroom floor in my hotel room. Sure. As performers go, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy. So, um, yeah, so sometimes we do tea, or if one of us is sick or whatever, we want to drink, but we try to do it mostly... Every chance we get, actually. <laughs> show or no show, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's not beer there. No, this is, uh, this is lovely end of days water. Yeah. Um, actually, I think it's holy water then, isn't it? Because uh, it's about the Bible. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's talk about from, from yes. those early days of, of Dignation yes. to doing it, the notion, mm. and then the eventual doing it live in front of a gigantic audience. Oh, yeah. You How many did you do yeah. just the two of you sitting on a couch with your laptops on your lap having a beer? Well, it's it's before. It's a that's a hard it's a hard question because we did um, we did about 7 or 8. Have you not learned yet though that this is the show that is really poignant all about hard, hard yes, questions. This is I didn't realize we were going to bring that up. Don't right. feign surprise. Oh Jesus. Glad you got my notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, we uh, we had done about like 6 or or seven episodes, ten, something like that, and we got invited to go to this tech TV meetup in Toronto. Um, and so we just thought, well, while we're there, we'll just shoot an episode, like, beforehand, before right. everybody gets there, we'll just pound out an episode, we gotta shoot, in this, we gotta shoot this week anyway, let's just do it there. Right. So we, we get there, and, and we're kind of just, like, in this restaurant, and there's, like, a few people that sort of show up way early to this tech TV meetup, like, four or five hours early, you know? And so we're not, we're like, well, you can come in. I mean, we're, <laughs> don't just stand out inside of the street. Like, there's a restaurant, nobody's here. So we were like, well, we're gonna, we have to shoot a show. And they were like, oh, well, do you mind if we, like, sit and watch the show? And I'm like, sure, I guess. So we had, like, five or six people we had never met who were fans of the show sit and just watch it taping. First time you actually met your fans. It was. While you were about to do your show. It was. Yeah. And, and so it was the first taste of... Wait a second. Oh, they like watching us do this? Like what? And then we did our first uh, actual live episode um, months months later, and I remember driving up to um, 
driving for the show because we had no idea. We had no idea if people were going to show up. I mean, it's, it's, it was like we're shooting in San Francisco. We don't even know how many people who watch the show live in San Francisco. Right. Well, that's what? the thing. You got to be surprised by the notion how many people will show up once we decide to invite people to show up. Exactly. You can't be surprised, however, that people like to watch the show. True. Because that's what you're doing. It is true. <laughs> that is true. So it was, it was one of those things of please but the somebody difference, show up. The difference between doing the show and being able to edit it. Yeah. You know, uh, thus far, this is our six, as I mentioned. Yeah. We've yet to, to do any editing. Yeah, we don't do, we do all live to tape. Right. So we just start the hit record and an hour later, what we get is what we get. Right. <laughs> you know, but we were really afraid that nobody was going to show up. It, oh, yeah. Honestly, that first episode it was the first live one. And, and now, how many showed up? Maybe like 150, something like that. I mean, it was for, for us at the time, it was like, oh my God, this is it. Oh, that's we, huge. We packed a place. That's huge. Sort of, there's a little bit of room in the back. But we packed a place. Like, there's hey, not even 150 hey. people watching us now. So just <laughs> oh, to give right, you an so idea. That's good. I feel better now. Um, and it, then now we've, they go crazy. We just did one at um, South by Southwest. Um, we thousands, played, right? Yeah, it was uh, 2,200. That's fantastic. Yeah, we actually played. And the, it's just the two of you sitting, sitting on, this... on a couch on a giant stage. And it was the stage that REM played the year before. Of course, of course it was. It was crazy. Do you have computers on your lap? Yeah, and then we got this big jumbotron. So like we're just sitting there and you like look up and it's just a giant image of you sitting there. And it's like, this is a little screwed up. Like yeah. I wouldn't watch <laughs> you know? Well, you realize, it. yeah. You yeah. realize what uh, the whole other aspect mm. of what you do in terms of it being a live show yeah. um, uh, as an improv performer. By the way, will there be a reunion of the Misfit Toys? Uh, I'm sure that... Actually, that's a good idea. I had actually not thought of doing that, but I still know almost all of the Misfit Toys. I would like to do all that I can to bring the Misfit Toys back together. Re all yeah. right. All yeah. right. Can, can we uh, put a pin just for a second in the live Dignation shows yes, and talk and, a and little talk bit? Misfit Toys? Just a little bit. Sure. Can, you founded this company. <clears throat> yeah, I was founded it and directed it, yeah, here in L.A. And, and so did you put them together from Misfits from other improv groups or just people you met in improv class? You know, actually... So I... I think it's time to really spill the beans on this. Yeah, well, I mean... Misfit toy. This really... They wanted to do an E-True Hollywood story. This and is, I we're turned doing it, it now. I've we're turned doing it down. But, but I'm going to give that exclusive to you right now. Please. Uh, so I kind of came into acting and performing through improv. I had n I'd never... Re I mean, I'd sort of been like, oh, yeah, I'm a ham. I could be in front. I mean, yeah, maybe I'll be an actor. I don't know. I'm, I'm short, 5'8". What? Maybe I couldn't be an actor. You know what I mean? You could be a superstar, 5'8". Yeah, yeah. Now I Now I know. It's like, right. it's like being a, the king of the jockeys. Um, so I went to uh, this college. I, I mean, I went to American University in Washington, D.C. And uh, Oh, did you know? Yes, I did. Nicely yeah. done. Thank you very much. Did you graduate that. from that fine institution? Yes, I did with wow. a computer science degree. Oh, that's right. Yes. Not so impressed. Sorry. No, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, and I went, I did like one of those like freshman overnight check it out things, and they had this group uh, of people doing improv. And I had only seen it on like Whose Line Is It Anywhere, you know, and like I was like, oh, okay, cool. I, I, I know improv. Mm. And it... It was, it was a life-changing experience for me. I mean, I went home and I said, I'm going to go to AU, I'm going to start doing improv, and that's what I'm doing. Like, this is it for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And then I showed up and they went, oh, yeah, those are just friends. You can't, they don't, it's not like you can get in that. <laughs> and I was like, so I came to college to do this. You right. Bleh. And then later they did auditions and stuff, and I auditioned and got on the troupe. And so we traveled around um, all through college doing, uh, you know, short form improv comedy and just really loving it. And then once you got to L.A. There, there was sort of nothing for me to do. I mean, I, I, was I, went, groundlings. I went to the Groundlings right. and, and auditioned. And, but I was, I was young and I think I might have been a little bit of a dick where I was like... That's well, a good time to be a dick. Right. I mean, I was straight out of college and I was like, I, I know how to do improv. Right. I don't need to take a two-year, three-year class. I want to find a stage and get my ass on it. Yeah, and well, then see, I'm going to be a superstar. You know what I mean? Everybody I kind of came here with the same attitude from yeah. San Francisco doing stand-up and everyone said, you got to get into an acting class. And I yeah. said, I don't have time to stop and learn how to do this. Yeah, yeah. I already know how to be comfortable in front of strangers. Yeah, just do it. Being comfortable in front of a camera <clears> should be a piece of cake. Of course, yeah. I knew nothing about auditioning. We, and that's we where all it all grinds lessons. to yeah. a stop for three years <laughs> yeah. while I go through 300 auditions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where after a while it feels like they're not just saying no, they're saying how about anyone but you yes. is going to get this part. And I always turn into Albert Brooks when I tell this story <laughs> and nobody knows why. <laughs> Nemo, Nemo, where are you, Nemo? All right. 
Um, so you decide, I'm not going to deal with this crap. With yeah, the, I know how to do it. Yeah, I know how to do this. Come I'll on. just put together my own group. I'll, I'll find my own misfit group. Yeah, and, and then just from acting class, and, and uh, we, I, I found a group of people who had no, none of them had done improv before. Right. But in my dickishness, I believed that I could actually somehow sense that somebody could do improv whether they have ever done it before or not, which really... You were 22 and you were... I was 22, I was ruling the world, that's what was happening. So I just said, let's just do it, what? Pfft, forget it, let's do it, and, and it... You knew talent when you saw it? I knew talent, it was raw talent. Sure. And I could mold it. Yeah, with you could. my hands of molding. Um, like a young Orson Welles. Really, right? that's how right? I, I, I have been, I was called that a couple times. Right, you know he went crazy though, right? Yes, Okay, I did. just checking. Anyway, so I, you know, we, we just, I just, we literally were like working out in my living room in my apartment, and we were, I taught how to do improv horribly wrong. Wow. Um, but for me, it was always about a show. I mean, it's sort of, it's weird the things that are through lines. Yeah. You know, even then, it was always, it wasn't about being, I was like, we, it's not about being funny, it's about being entertaining. You can be funny, you know, if we're, if we're la drop dead hysterical 20% of the time and entertaining, and enjoyable to watch 100% of the time, we're winning. Right. It's, for me, it was always, you go to these shows and it was like, man, it was, it was so funny, and then it was, it was just boring, and I didn't quite get most of it. And it's not because, it's, because it, it's not just because that stuff sort of didn't hit. Right. It's because you, there's also a vibe that you gotta bring, which is why at the time I was really in short form improv and wasn't really a big fan of long form, but we had a lot of like music cues, we had an actual music mm. guy and light guy, and, it was more of a show show than it was just improv. And uh, we ran for two and a half years. At the same At the location? same place, Empty Stage Theater. Wow. Yeah, which no longer exists. But uh, yeah, this guy, Stan Wells, who used to actually run the Growlings, he... And the rest of the uh, Misfit Toys, they've gone on to Fame and Fortune doing... Uh, I think one's a janitor. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I, a, a buddy of mine moved back to Florida. I want to know how hard it's going to be for me to get everyone back together. That's really why I'm asking. No, not that hard. No? If I picked up the phone and said, hey, guys, Kevin Pollack wants you to come back and do a show, I, I think will go, host, first off, you're an ass. I will host the night. Oh, you serious? Dude, yeah, I'm down. I'm Whatever, we can do it. Yeah. I, can get, I, can I get want to see this like happen that. is what I'm saying. Dude, done. Yeah. It's happening already. Because I want all of your new fans Well, we. From... It's, it's funny that you said that because I had... I have not. I had not done improv f since, basically, and um, <coughs> just recently, uh, Stan um, and, and uh, my friend Brooke, they just kind of because I bumped into Felicia, who's an old friend of mine. I actually know Felicia Day mm -hmm. from before she was doing any internet stuff. Before I was doing any internet stuff, we worked out at the Empty Stage together doing improv. Uh, she's a great, great improv actress and uh, or comedian. I don't know what the proper verbiage is or nounage. Whatever. She'll be on May 10th. You can listen to oh, her good, talk good, all good, good. about it. I'm sure she will bring me up. Yeah, I can't wait to ask her. Anyway. Uh, this is going to get good. So Ooh, we, who's so, got a pen? Right so, then. Why, why don't I have a pen still? I never. Alex Felicia Improv, go. So, uh, so I was doing this little voiceover thing for this web thing that she was doing just as a you know, favor, and it was fun. And, and she was like, yeah. I was like, man, I really miss doing improv. Of all the things that I do. And my show is sort of improv, like, but it's just me being me and like talking funny, I guess. But it's not improv, it's not, you know, characters sure, and scenes sure. and, and really having fun building these new worlds and, and being wacky. And, right. And she goes, yeah, oh, my friend's putting together, like, this kind of, like, just group of people who are too, who've become too busy right. to actually be in a weekly troupe. Like, you know, if you're going to be in a weekly troupe, you've got to practice, rehearse once a week, show once a week. A lot of people don't have time to do that, you know right. what I mean? And, so, so I was like, oh my God, I'd, I'd love to. So we started this thing and we, we theoretically are doing it once a month. Um, I've missed the last two just because I was in Austin and I was doing, a, you know, I can't remember what the hell the other thing was, but it was so much fun because we just Twittered about it, full, full house. Boom. And it was me, Felicia, a couple other the guys from the Guild um, and some of our old improv buds and it was really, really fun. And sure. I, I really want to get back into doing something regularly. You don't have the time. Don't even think about it. I don't have the time. No. I don't even know what we're talking about. Before, how do we go from Dignation to the Totally Rad Show? What's the bridge there? Uh, you know, honestly, it, friends. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Most people I meet that are creative and that have either found success or, or found monetary success, meaning they can pay the rent, most of the time they just, and this is how I felt, I was always like, why, why are we not doing something? Right. Let's do something. And, and I'm a, I have this really weird thing in me where... 
a lot of people go like, oh, we should, yeah, yeah we should. You and I would, we would kill something. Why are we not doing it? Okay, well, call me and I'll, okay, bye. And then that's the last you hear of it. Well, that's what I meant when, by why, wanting to get the Misfits uh, back together. I know, which is why I, I let you go <laughs> off a couple times until you press. Because I am, yeah. I have this weird thing in me where if I meet people and we connect creatively, it, it like becomes my you, passion you don't to let it go. figure out what we can do together. And sometimes it takes years and then that thing clicks, you know? Right. And I met, I met these... Um, Dan and Jeff, who were my co-hosts on, on uh, uh, the Totally Rad Show, and we met playing D and D. Yes, that happened. Uh, uh, we met playing pen and paper D and D, and I was like, "You, we, what? We got to do something, you know." And and my buddy Dan was on a on a show, and that show was coming to an end, and so I was like, well, "Why don't we do like a show show?" And we sat down for about six months, formed a company. Um, so we actually run a production company in LA, and we produce that here and license it license it to Revision Three. Um, so yeah, it was just like, let's do something fun, and yeah. we like video games and movies and comics, and I was like, how, how can we get paid to play video games, and how can we get paid to watch movies, well, and we figured it out. I, well, that's just it. You <laughs> have this idea, you have this group of guys you want to work with, but yeah. then how, do you, how did you go about setting up the actual production of the show? Uh, I mean, talk to, walk us through that process, because I think... Well, like I said, I was, I was fortunate to be in a position where I was, I was making some money. Sure. Which is always... It's it just makes everything easier because at the end of the day, when you have no money, it's really hard to do stuff for free or stupidly cheap. Because wait a like, minute, you can get paid doing this stuff. <laughs> you didn't get Nobody a check. For it? Said that I would, that I could, that there was a. Who? You got to talk to the right people. See, this is why. You know. Cal just yelled no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so you know we. I, 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 <laughs> no money. I don't buy that. I see these kinos. <laughs> I know what's going on. So here. you you basically anyway. had to go out and find the production room yourself and and, and we, the lighting we, package and the cameras and you yeah. said I know how to do this. Yeah, well, we found uh, we found a friend, right. uh, Stephen Kinzelik, who uh, thankfully just happened to have all that stuff. He was one of these guys who loved production and just kept buying stuff that he shouldn't be buying because he wanted to have the newest, latest, and greatest camera, which was great for us. Talking about finding the right people in the right place. Most definitely. And we shot, we just painted a green screen wall in his garage and we were like, let's just, why, why, why aren't we just going to do this? Right. And that's one of the things that I'll say I love about the internet is before, if you want to do a show, even like a show like this, there was no, there was nothing you could do. I mean, you could maybe go on to public access, but at the end of the day, well, that's like not, I mean, it's like not even doing the show, you know right. what I mean? And there's some great stuff on public access. I don't No, no, he's not. Rated. He's not right about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it gives you this great opportunity where you can just go, you know what, screw it. I'm going to set up a camera. Yeah. I can, we, can, we can figure out how to do this. Right. And if people, if you, have a, if you have a passionate voice about something and people agree or disagree. They'll forgive your mistakes along the way. Because they don't care. Because right. they go, it's a garage. And Maybe they also feel crickets. they also feel like they're a part of it yeah. when you're stumbling and finding your way. I mean, that's what I have certainly found on this thing is I would feel coming from this world of alleged perfection in motion yeah, pictures yeah. where you're creating so-called magic with all these tools and these professions <coughs> and union members and these 100 people standing yeah. around a sound stage and you go, my God, this is going to be fantastic. Coming from that world for yeah. so many years to uh, literally... I have a barn and some costumes. Why don't we yeah. put, put on a show? Yeah. Uh, and by the way, if you make mistakes and you say things wrong, literally no one cares. No, no. And, Just and get if, back on they, track. They're proud that you're trying right. to do something. Yeah. And, and including I mean, them. Yeah, right. yeah. And that's the other thing that I found, which is actually really great, is you know, we, we tried to, to connect on the screensavers with our audience as much as we could. But at the end of the day... TV is such a cold, it's like a cold medium. There's like there's a difference between bumping into somebody who's like you know on a series right. or somebody who's just doing stuff on the web because there's this feeling of friendship almost, which is so great. I mean, when we meet fans, it's like these people and they're shocked that you right. are so happy that they actually watch your stuff. I mean. Right. You don't know how many people come up and they're like, "I'm so oh, can I take a pic?" And I was like, "Are you kidding me? Yeah, I will I'll yeah. deliver your child. Like, I don't well, you, that, without you, I do I, nothing." I will <laughs> tell you, even from high atop, yeah. the the and, and I think I sensed it in in John as well. There's a, mm. there's a sense of we're not here without you. Oh well, yeah, and yeah. you know, people will come up and they'll say, "You know, do you mind?" And I always yeah. say, "It beats your alternative." Right. Where I'm here and you don't care. <laughs> 
that I'm at the dry cleaner standing next to you. So don't, you know, seriously. Yeah, wholeheartedly. Because yeah. I, I think actor, I think actors and, and celebrities or whatever the heck that is get a bad rap. Because I think it's one of those things of a few bad apples can ruin the bunch. Where, oh boy, you know, do they. You know, you meet somebody and they're like, fine, fine, what the f- you do? I'm trying to, I'm bad, me sitting here, what, right, what? Right. And they're like, w- really? Yeah. Really? That's, Go get a real job. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the, this is this, it's like winning the lottery and being like, fucking government takes half my lottery. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, they do. Because right. they gave you the rest of the money, you know? Yeah, I, I'm always telling people if you meet an actor yeah. or an actress and they complain, then never stop slapping them because I'm yeah. not even sure it's a job. It's not. <laughs> I, this is really funny. Actually, my, my fiancé is, is here, and her um, her stepfather was driving me to the airport, and he was like, well, we're going to go on this big trip. You know, we're going to go to, I don't even know where the hell it was. It's going to be two weeks, you know. It's going to be in, in the middle of summer. And I was like, oh, two, I don't think I can do that. I, I can't take two. Because I was like, two weeks out. I mean, I have, right. I have a show that, like, Dignation comes out every Wednesday. Right. Every Wednesday. TRS comes out every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Project Lore comes out every day. And if I take a vacation, that stops. Right. And the, he was like, oh, that's, that's so sad. You can't ever have a vacation. And I go, I don't feel like I've had a job in four years. Yeah. I still feel like the guy who, when I was getting money from my mom, and I could just sort of wake up and do whatever the hell I wanted... That's still who I am. Yeah, I was like, right. it's not that I can't take a vacation. My I, life's a I vacation, work. and every yeah. now and then I have to work. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's 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 really funny the things that you can do for profession. So every Wednesday is Dignation, every mm-hmm. Tuesday is totally rad, and rad show. Totally and you, rad show. But you say you go live to tape. We do live to tape, yeah. So we shoot every Friday uh, for the Totally Rad Show, and then we shoot um, every Tuesday, I guess it is. Right. For for Dignation, but sometimes we'll stack those because they're not as topical. Uh, so we'll shoot like two in a row or whatever, so we can go every other week sometimes. So, but I'm. I think it's time to hear from your fans that have joined us. Please love it. If whatever. you don't mind. What's up? Um, Double peace. That means more peace for everybody. Double peace. It's, look at that. Yeah. I'm a big fan of peace. Place dead last on Beat the Geeks. Mm-hmm. At Son of D yep. on the Twitter. Beat the Geeks, uh, good uh, Comedy Central, uh, old Comedy Central. How uh, could you game possibly show. place last? I wasn't yet a geek, I guess. What, 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 what? There were some really, there were some trick You're questions. You were building computers in college. I know, there, no, but there were some trick questions. I believe one of the questions was something about some song, Shake Your, and I think I said Moneymaker. Is right? that a booty? Shake your moneymaker. I don't think it was even booty. Trick question. There are a lot of things you could shake. Salt shake shaker, your matzo. Shake your matzo. Right? It fits shake with everything. Shake your castanets. Shake your castanets. Maybe it was a you know Spanish thing. At Bill Gregory. What's up, Bill? Uh, I want to know if you're going to be doing any more drunken duets with Heather. Oh! Can we talk wow. about this a little bit? Did you hear about <coughs> that? No, I think it's time, though. Oh, it was epic. I don't know what we were thinking. What we were drinking. And that's usually when it happens. Would you like some more vodka? So I would like that. All Thank right. you. Yes, more vodka, please. Uh, yeah, so Heather, uh, my fiance, is a, a musician, uh, singer songwriter. I'll say. Later, lady. And uh, I have been known to uh, tickle the lute, as it were. I'm sorry, it sounded, <coughs> it sounded to me like yes. you said tickle the lute. No, I think you misheard me. Because I have no uh, idea what that means. <laughs> and I would like to. It's fun. Because right now uh, I'm scared. It, it's a little scary, but once you do it once, it's comfortable. Uh, no, we, uh, so we, we sort of have, you know, this, we like to jam every once. We kind of met singing together okay um and so every once in a while like our house sort of has a couple guitars strewn here and there and every once in a while when the wine is right uh we will sit down and just jam just play cover songs whatever and i don't know Jesus. what came over me but i was like how did people know about this and see this well i said well what, what, why don't we just you stream this? no why, why don't we no you didn't stream this? no you didn't yeah we're drunk we're in our house whatever okay i get a guitar turn on the internet's why are we doing this? Wow. And then she said, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. And I was like, no, we're doing it. And so I just signed. And I was like, well, let's see. I mean, technically, is it even possible? And then it was like, sign up for an Oh, and we're, stre- oh, we're streaming now. It's happening now. Here we go. And so we just did like, we played for like an hour and a half. Like had like 500 people watching. <laughs> I didn't even understand the click to record it. No, no. So it was just this really kind of cool experience that we like jammed, drank, took requests. 
like pulled up tab of songs we'd never even heard. Well, and then I'm jammed, and then it did, it's gone. I'm down with so that, Bill Gregory. When the question is asked, will yeah. there be more drunken duets? I think so. It was actually really. Will you really put up a calendar, possibly? I don't. It's not that that, that defeats the purpose of the drunken duetness. Um. If you knew when you could get it. it Alex needs to shut off his iPhone. Really, now? Is now, he going? Now he it needs going? to shut off his yeah, iPhone. Yeah, right? How, how, how is the Twitter? It's airplane mode. Airplane mode. That should be fine. It's not yeah. his. It might it's be mine. Oh. I don't have mine. There you go. Um, you know, I guess. watched uh, uh, Dignation yeah. on the plane. I mentioned to you before yeah, the show, Virgin coming America. on the Virgin America from yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, you got that amazing tour of yeah. the Virgin America offices, and you went on the motorcycle tour of London. You're going to have oh, to help. Oh, you didn't even see, that wasn't the live show from London you were talking about. I, you guys were in their offices, and they're... Oh, yeah. that's hysterical. Yeah, no, 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 no. We did two shows out in London, because um, the Virgin America guys, they, I don't, they had some real flags. So, interesting thing about FAA, FAA regulation, you know, transportation board, no airline that works within the continental US can be owned by any more than 40% of a foreign owned company, right? Uh -huh. So the French Air, well, I, I made that up, but it, if you have to be owned 60% United States owned. And the reason why they do that is because of the, the exact same thing that happened after 9-11 when the airline industry was starting to go down and the government went in and goes, well, people need to fly. Boom, boom, boom. They're all right doing that unless it's like, all right, Tel Aviv Air, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, so that's just like a little sticking point. So Virgin America is actually a separate company. Yes. That licensed the Virgin brand from the Virgin management company. And for some reason, they just weren't getting cleared to fly. And they were like, what do we do? And so they came to us and they said, we want to do something crazy. We want to work on getting public knowledge of this, and we're going to do it through you guys. Really? Yeah. And so we went, whatever, let's they do it. They used you as the gateway so to launching did, a business? Yeah. Before they even got cleared to launch, we, were, we shot a full episode of Dignation in a Virgin America plane, and we're like, dude, look at these planes. They got this new system. Like these, Let these people fly. I want this flight. Did you have to speak in front of the government? No. Well, then they went in front of the government, and we put together this whole big package of, like, look how great this company is and did this whole big thing um, through Revision 3 to present to the government. And, um, and we were like, this is, this is stupid. I mean, it's great. You, well, you know, it's great. I mean, the service is great. Yeah. TV from beginning to end. You know no, what I mean? no, like, yes. It's, it's, a high, it's really a high bar. Uh, and so they finally got cleared to, to fly, which is great, and we kind of feel like we had a little bit to do with that. So you get to fly for free for life, obviously. Uh, I don't think, I mean, we did some stuff, but we didn't, <laughs> we didn't blow anybody, as it were. Uh, what? <laughs> so, but, uh, but the great thing was the guy who... It's important you shared that, by the way, because there were some questions were, oh, here yes, yes, that oh, I'm reading. Did good. he? I no. just skipped them, skipped them. Uh, so anyway, so, but the guy who actually was sort of spearheading that internet publicity thing for Virgin America got called up to the big leagues, the guys at Virgin Management were like, whoa, we saw what you did at Virgin America, come over here and do some stuff with that um, um, for Virgin uh, Management Company who owns all the different Virgin brands. And so we went over there, we, they asked us to come over and do a show right. uh, because uh, Branson was doing his book, put out his, uh, his book and so we like showed up there and we, we didn't know what was going on and we get up on stage and we're doing the little sponsor read of thanks for having us and all this stuff and they were like well, well we have a little gift and we opened it up and it was two uh, copies of Branson's books signed to me and Kevin thanking us for coming and thanking us for all the stuff we did on Virgin America it was like Pfft. Richard Branson is like signed, like this is weird and then we got to do the motorcycle stuff it was fun it was a really fun time have, but have you been to his island I have not but I will say it's on my short list of places to get married would you like to know a little bit more about it? Oh, I'm sorry. Have <laughs> you been to his island? Just say it if you had any curiosity. About I could be semi-curious. Necker Island? That's the one I'm thinking about, yeah. Yeah. Maybe the strangest <laughs> private gig I've ever done in oh, my life. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I don't even know if I'm legally allowed to talk about it, but I'm gonna. <laughs> Um, you know, as a comedian, I will get asked to do corporate sure. functions. For I will sure. get asked to do private parties. Sure. Sometimes 
it's almost like the more they pay you, the worse the gig's going to be. Right. Right. Like, there's going to be some satanic. No, killings. it's not quite that. But there's... it's just if 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 you're used to getting say twenty five thousand dollars for right. a to perform in front of five hundred businessmen from X company, right. having their retreat in right. uh, in the Bahamas. Right. Then, if they want you to perform in front of twenty of those people, they'll pay you seventy-five thousand. And it, because it's so much money, you go, "Yeah, where do you want me to go?" Right? Yeah, right. So I get a call, and there's this huge company that runs vacations for the wildly wealthy. They put together yes, I've extreme heard of these vacation yes, yes, packages. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think there's a reality show about that. Companies like that. Okay. I think I'm you're. I think just, you're maybe. absolutely right. I'm not saying this is that company. No, I nope. don't think because I don't even know what company. I that don't is. either. So a company. A company. Uh, called my agent said you've got a gig performing at this guy's birthday party. Oh really? What? Well, they're paying you this. Wow. So what country does he own? Russia. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he's one of the more. Um, Higher end but it's guys. not, what, is it a good part of Russia, or is it the part yeah. that they're going to want me to do something for them at some point, <laughs> other than perform? Am I going to have you to kill somebody? You don't understand what yeah. stand-up comedy is. Well, someone died during the party. That's really right, what I want right, to know, right. uh, at the hands of someone else. So the guy's uh, completely legitimate, you know, I can sure. even Google him, I can check okay. out his business okay. practices, what have you. So he hired uh, myself, Ice-T, and his band. Ice-T yep. has a band? Sure he does. All right, wow. Yeah, to uh, to fly into uh, uh, somewhere, and then we were helicoptered over to uh, this island, and uh, where this guy had rented the island yeah. from Branson. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was this Russian guy's birthday, and so I well, I didn't really know what my you know other than performing. Right. Right. So they said, well, you know what? Come over and stay. You can stay at one of the one of the suites on, yeah, at, on the island. Yeah, I think it was fifty or something. Yeah. Like so you'll stay and you'll hang out. You know, it's, really, you need to be there for five days. What are you talking about? What? I thought I was just coming in to perform. Now nah, you need to be there for five days. It's going to be a. Well, they'll explain it when you get there. It's. <laughs> I'm at the airport and I'm thinking in in the Bahamas or wherever yeah. it was. We flew into first yeah. San Juan, wherever it was, and I said, well. I'm, I'm of mind to go back home. This yeah. is sounding yeah. weird. And he said, no, 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 it's all legitimate, it's all legitimate. The company is the one who has the complete itinerary of all the activities. And it's just that they want you to do, you, don't, you, won't, you won't ever have to perform. Because that's one of the things in the back of my mind is I don't really want to do stand-up in front of seven people. That's never fun. The smaller the group, yeah, the worse yeah, it is. Of course, yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyways, Christopher Walken sounds like this. Hello, put down your pairs. I'm talking. You know, you don't... Right. So they said, here's the good news. You won't have to uh, do the 45-minute uh, performance, Doesn't but you like have to host news. a couple of activities that take place on the beach. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? All right, we'll leave it there for now. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, it turned into the absolute so, hell gig, the... and I never really worked the whole time I was there. I just had to attend a couple of dinners and shake hands. I think what happened was is that the Russian birthday boy wanted to have a celebrity at his birthday yeah, bash, yeah. and I was the guy who was supposed to hang around. So literally, I'm like, I don't know, before the killings, O.J. Simpson, and I'm just hanging out at the pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it was so ridiculous and bizarre. Oh, that's awesome. So that's in your future, now, mister. But how was the island? Well, the island is sick and crazy. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was. Because um, we we did the um, one of the things is that in this whole craziness of of things that have happened over the last four years, we got to go do uh, be on the Jimmy Fallon show. Yeah, yeah. I saw you guys on the show. Yeah, You're great. Which, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Which was sort of weird and surreal. And sure. Like what? And he, uh, Jimmy uh, Fallon is a really great guy. He actually came on and did an episode of Dignation before we went on his show, which was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And I just found out that he got married on Necker Island. There you go. So I want to hit him that. up. I got to I got to Twitter him and be like, bro. Yeah. Did you? Was it worth the what I know it costs a night? Cause I don't. <laughs> I know it is. It is. Because you're flying it. everybody in and you'll have your own thing. Yeah. And you're rolling in dough now. If I had your money, I'd burn mine. Let's that's be honest. Well. Um, so that's amazing. So Jimmy Fallon was on Dignation. I wonder how that happened. Uh, well, he, uh, he, he, It's not important. Let's go to the five. Let's go to the Twitter five. <laughs> all right, all right. All right? Yeah, yeah. Twitter five, you ready? Yes. From at the Halcyon. Yes. Alex five, ready. Horoscope or tarot? Horoscope. Strawberry oh, or yeah. banana? 
Uh, both. Right? I didn't know what I was right? saying, so they went out there. <laughs> not even a word, Bjo. <laughs> uh, McD or Taco Bell? McD. I'm not a real... Oh, wait. Or Taco Bell? Why didn't you choose some, a competitor to McD? See what he did, though? Amazing. He threw you a little... Wow. And that's why he's making it hard. McD, McD. or Taco Bell? I'm going to say McD Big Mac. I like the cut of your yeah. jib. Thank you. Here's a tough one. Playboy or penthouse? Answer this in front of your fiance. I, I will, and I'm going to say uh, penthouse because it was slightly dirtier. Slightly? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say anytime you can see inside of a woman, that's going to be dirtier. <laughs> I mean, unless uh, it's a medical magazine. But technically I speaking. Yes, technically right. it is dirtier. Pirates. Last question. Or ninjas? Or ninjas. How did you know that? Because that's. Uh, just, I'm, I'm a nerd. Uh, I am going to say. Uh, now there's been all this pirate controversy out in Somalia and all yes. that. Does it make the question a little tougher? No. Okay. Because uh, uh, ninjas would never take a boat. <clears throat> no. Ninjas would. You would just see a boat floating with nobody on it, and they would go, wonder what happened? <laughs> ninjas. <laughs> Which, of course, is what I'm going to say. Ninjas, because right. I was a kid and had a ninja out there. Ding, 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 ding. Flying, nice. Throwing stars, and I even had the tree climbing claws, which are horrible. Nicely done. Yeah, good times. Um, uh, you do have a lot of great fans. I don't want to uh, disclude. At Sean yeah, Things. Go crazy. It doesn't have to be five. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Wow. Strap in. <laughs> if you were... This, just to the setup. Oh, the I was question. just about to say, did it just start If with, you were lost on the planet Hoth, do okay. I need to continue? No, go. I got it. <sighs> would, I, <laughs> would I gut a Tauntaun, or would I... Who would you like to help you keep warm inside of the Tauntaun? His fiance's here. I well, think the answer. Off, and it's very easy, my fiance. All right. Uh, but uh, I have to say that may have been the best, the best presentation packaging, if you will, around the who do you want to bang the most on the planet. Hey, nice. Right? right. Because that could just be that simple. You get to bang one person. Who is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And instead, he put this like flare on it. He right. Talked about Hoth. Right. The Tauntauns. Implied that I need to be inside the Tauntaun, which is all very good. And we had a uh, Star Trek uh, T-shirt theme, Star Star Wars T-shirt okay, theme. I didn't want to correct you because thank I'm you for <laughs> not. Because my next question I'd already planned was, are you excited about the premiere of, of Star Trek? But we have uh, Jamie, my uh, fiance, and in the other room, uh, J Mac has got. I, I they're saw sporting. That. They're sporting the. Uh, they're sporting some old Star school Wars. Old school. Stuff. Absolutely, that's the only way. I to wish I had gotten the memo. I would have brought my uh, Star Wars stuff. Well, when I come on Dignation, I'll bring you a shirt. Um, Done. Uh, are you excited about the Star Trek premiere? Um, yes. No, no. No, no, no. There's yes. No, there's no incorrect answer. Yes and question mark. All right. Um, I just based on the trailers, you're saying yes. You, I'm a big Star Trek fan. Right. Huge Star Trek fan. It was big. Uh, of, no, not so much the original. I watched Next Generation was what really got me hooked, and then I was a huge Voyager. Voyager is my joint. Okay. Uh, I'll give you the Voyager. I'll back your play 100%. Okay, good. We need to talk a little bit about the original versus Next Generation based on one point only. Just the one. It's not going to be the Captain v. Captain, is it? No, because that's an obvious oh, I'm just thing. saying. People who love Next Generation okay. are going to back Picard's play till the end of the year. Of course, because the man is the man. All right, and the rest of us know that you're idiots. We're, you we're, can't beat Shatner. Exactly. Um, <laughs> more importantly... More importantly... What year... Does Next Generation take place? What year does it take place? Yeah, star date. Do you have a time frame? Uh, no, none. So it's like... 2112? It's 21 something though, isn't it? Isn't it? I think so. Right? We'll yeah. get somebody tweet us real yeah, fast yeah, yeah, and yeah. tell us. <laughs> so we're... I feel like we're having a nerd stare contest. Buddy, this is, this is important. <laughs> I'm here though. Let's because see, I, what is it? I feel your fanship. And okay, I, yes. And, I, and I, I know that it's 100% sincere. It was, it was my joint. Right. In fact, there's no joint love of Voyager without... You can't get... I don't think you watch Voyager if you're can't. not an NGE guy. Right. Then explain to me 200 years or 100 years okay. into our future now. Yes. Okay. Now you're getting some crazy NASA shit, which I love. Right. Okay, keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna, you're, you're about to make a left. I'm excited. You're not prepared, trust me. I'm excited. <laughs> The thing that turned me off about Next Generation, mm -hmm. not only because my original cast was, was true no longer your heart. there, ah, yes, yes. was that Captain Picard was bald. And the idea that a hundred years in the future, you could, you, <laughs> if you had cancer, you could go, <laughs> no cancer, bald, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> that is really interesting. And we go back to the questions. Obviously. That is All really right. interesting. I'm going to say there was a style choice. I just, okay. It was because he was if a French vintner, and he wanted to know. If they had gone style choice from the get, I'm on board and never what stop that? watching so that show. every conversation, it's in 200 years, you, you know it's a choice because you can cure it. Every conversation you walk in, I'm Captain Picard. I, yes, I choose to be bald. <laughs> right. What's the situation with the Klingons? Like, what? You're not going to say it every time? <laughs> Once. <laughs> Once. All right, I get that one. All right. Welcome to this new series. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask this question right. from Thandor in the chat room because, yes, Thandor. You mm. betcha. <laughs> That's a TH, people. Um, yeah, I love that. Because I don't understand anything about this, and I think everyone that yes. loves you does, yeah. clearly. Control plus alt plus chicken. Control alt chicken. My co host, Heather, actually sitting in the audience. Love it. Was a uh, uh, control alt chicken was a cooking show that I did? Of course. Yeah, why wouldn't what? I? Yes. I tell you, I have these things where I go, we should do a cooking show. And then you and, and your then fiance I go, do, it. do it live. <laughs> Not live so much. Oh. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was actually really, really fun. It was. It's sort of become this like fun cult. Thing. When was the last time you did it? Uh, years ago. So we're clearly ready for another drunk singing. Drunk singing <laughs> on and Ustream. We, are, we actually are then, talking about bringing Control Chicken back okay. soon. But yeah, it was. It was fun. It was you know people who didn't know anything about cooking, learning about cooking and learning about the history of food in a sort of weird science kind of way. It was fun. Fun. All right. So you're there. You go. You got the answer. Um, You've got uh, scroll up two questions. Which one do you want me to go with? Okay. The question is scroll up two questions. That's very meta. Right? I like it. <laughs> you can't even get there you, from here. No, because it's like the answer is ask the question. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> oh, the one in red? Oh, 24th century. Is oh, that, okay. That That's, this actually reminds me of something, yes. this question, because it says, ask you to uh, describe your new app for the iPhone. Yes. You were threatening to do the petting of the cat I was app. threatening to do the petting of the cat app, and then somebody did that app. Uh, it was already saw, out there. Yeah, well, I mean, I saw somebody did it, and the way they did it was one, because there's a lot of, especially with iPhone apps and some other ideas, you're like, I got this, I, I want to do this thing. Right. And it's about X, Y, or Z. Right. And, and somebody goes, oh, but somebody already did it. And you look at it and you go... Yeah, but that's really crap. They did it horribly. <laughs> they did it horribly. I see how I could... That, right. It's as if that didn't exist. <laughs> this is not the way that app was. It was like, I don't think technically I could do any better if not that good. Because so, the episode I saw of Dignation today on the plane was yeah. literally you discovering and talking about wouldn't it be great to have an app where yes. you put your a picture your of your cat on yep. the phone and yep. you pet it yep. and... I even thought you should record your own cat purring, but like that. you never got to that. So never someone else finished that. Now let's someone talk about the that. new app for the iPhone. So I came out. Uh, this I, is an exclusive. A buddy of mine came up with this idea, which was to have dogs licking the inside of your iPhone. I gotta go now. <laughs> what? Yes, dogs licking. Hey, you want to see it? I got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty easy. So if only we had the ISO cam set up, camera the five. ISO cam. It's going to come in here any second. So I'm going to bring in the uh, crew cam. So this... Actually, take a shot of the crew first, and then... That's Eilick. Establish the crew. Let me, there they are. Look at them like NASA. The crew. Like NASA. You really actually probably have more power in here than launched any of whatever. So you just go ahead and click on any of, either of the dogs. Okay, now bring that damn camera in here, you guys. I love it. Click on any of these dogs. You created this app. Yeah, well, a buddy of mine came up with it and, and, and coded it for, for us. And if people want to buy this app, is it... Yeah. Where do they go? What's it called? The, just the app store. It's called iLick. iLick? iLick, yeah. And yet it's dog licking. <laughs> right. It's, it's a metaphor for the proletariat. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, go yeah, ahead. No, no. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, so, so it was great. And, he's, and that actually is my dog, Montana, who has been on the show... A number of times. Oh, of course. Yes. Actually, she has... Uh, uh, she has her own show. She does. The cooking and singing and she drinking. Does. Yes. Yep. It's really what we call it is debauchery. I feel like we're almost to a cutting point for that. Are we, there it uh, is. Whoa. Okay. There she is. Look how cute she is. Look That's at Montana. That. That's and Montana. Uh, she's licking the inside of the phone. Yes. And that is... Uh, and wouldn't you, want, my voice. wouldn't you want your dog to lick the inside of you your could. phone? You could. Is that the premise here? Uh, no, the premise is there are two dogs. The premise is they can only see your dog lick the inside of the that phone? That one's not my dog. Okay. They can see Montana or Apollo. Montana or Apollo. And then we're thinking of expanding out depending upon how it goes. Okay. We've actually been kicking around this idea, which I think is really great, which is to, Thank to you. team with the uh, World Wildlife Fund and do, like, um, 
uh, other animals, like zoo animals, licking stuff, and then sell it and do like a, a buck of the proceeds goes for every app goes to the World Wildlife Fund. Very nice. It would be fun. Yeah. You know, use a little. Uh, but we're we're gonna kind of see how it goes. I mean, we never I've never done an app before. Never put one out. So. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. That's pretty exciting. No, it's already out there, and people can get mm -hmm. it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to iLick. iLick on the App Store. Well, I also want to say congratulations that you were able to sell the first application for the iPhone called iLick. Because <laughs> there <laughs> were several submissions. I don't know if Thank you knew you. that or I'm, not. I'm sure. Uh, our, our, uh, one of our executive producers, well, the other one other than myself, mm. Jason Calcanis, who yes. I know you know. I do know, Jason. Uh, in fact, again, the episode I saw Dignation today, Kevin was talking about him. Oh, yeah. Um, Will Dignation move to cable or late night? How many offers have you had? <laughs> no and zero. Really? <laughs> well, I, we, about a year into us doing Dignation, I, I was like, oh, uh, you know, this is cool. We're on the internet. This is fun. I wonder what would happen if, you know, Comedy Central came up and said, we want to do this on TV. You know what I mean? And should we even be thinking, like, is that even something we should be thinking about and what? And we all kind of sat around and went, no, no, wait, no, why? I mean, a little bit more money? Well, well I don't know, a lot more money, but, you know, I mean, for us it was like, no, we, we don't have anybody that's telling us what we got to do. Right. We don't have anybody that's telling us what we can and can't say. Yeah. Uh, we can shoot wherever we want, whenever we want. I mean, we right. have shot this show in places that we should never shoot shows. Yeah. Because it was like, well, screw it, let's just go into the freaking bathroom and shoot this show. Come on, what are we doing? Let's just do it. Right. And you just can't do that with TV, you know what I mean? Especially, um, sort of network ETV stuff, you know what I mean? And and our show is really blue, and we curse a lot and drink a lot, and none of that stuff makes it on the TV, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a chance that he asked this because uh, there's there's been inquiries into this little show, even after yeah. we'd only done two episodes. Yeah. Uh, someone saw it and said, we want to bring you to cable immediately. Oh, I like that. And I don't. Interesting. I, I, the, well, I think what we're doing here is... Uh, one of the reasons it's so exciting is because it's online. I, do, I, I agree. I mean, that's, that's yeah. why I do what I do. And where am I going to get this much time with any guest to talk about yeah. the, the wide range? Anyways, it's so I, I exciting yeah. to me. And even though, again, I'm just in the shallow end and have no clue each and every day what it is that's yeah. going to come next, all I know is this is the home for it. And, and I'm pretty fun. thrilled to hear you guys feel the same way. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? For us... Because your your devotion and your fan base yeah. is is your demographic. Yeah. So uh, wherever you go in late night or cable, they're going to have their demographic, right? Which is going to be a whole other beast. Yeah. They're going to want you to tame that beast right. and entertain that beast. Yeah. And, and we just make shows that we want to watch. That we we just want. I mean, it's just there's there's no there's no conversation. I never have a conversation with Kevin about. What should we have on the show? Like, ooh, d does that really fit in what we're trying to do? None of that. Crap. Anything goes. It's just like, what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about this th weird thing that happened to me. It's like, pfft, man, if you want that out there, let's do it. <laughs> you know? And yeah. but it's one of the reasons. It's one of the main reasons the show works so well, not yeah. only for you, but it's honest. for your audience. Yeah, and it's just yeah. totally honest. And that's the other thing is, is that we get a lot of, wow, you're exactly like you are on the show. Right. And it's like. Well, what? <laughs> yeah, what did you expect? But, uh, yeah, you can't yes. really do an act. Yeah, yeah. In that particular you venue, that stuff like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But the other thing that is, is that I've always um, had held in my because I do, you know, I mean, I am an actor. I go out in pilot seasons in the whole nine yards, and I get to play that painful game uh, uh, that you guys were so eloquently wrapping up. Which is, a, if ever you wanted to know what being an actor was like in L.A., listen to the conversation they had with he had with John Hammond. It's, that was like to a T. Um, well, thank you for that because no, it is available true. right now. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> At iTunes.com. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, when I'm uh, going out to, to these different auditions, and, and some of them are for these, you know, big se series, yeah. series, series, whatever. And uh, you know, I, I always tell people um, if ever I get onto some crazy ass giant show, you yeah. know, I'm still going to keep doing my internet shows because. You know, it's a lot like when you meet when you meet a fan. If you make the time to go up and and interact with that fan and take the picture and, and really try to engage, yeah. those people will be fans for life. Yeah. No matter what you do, they will be fans for life. And and I feel the same way. If I get onto some like big, you know, old media, TV, huge, you know, the next ER or whatever, if I keep doing 
the little internet shows that, well, I, that could. I mean, it's like, that's it. That's yeah. it. It's, it's done. You know? Although, careful when you say no matter what you do, they'll stick with you. Because some people in show business have proven it's very difficult. I agree. I agree. And that's, <laughs> yes. Um, are you, uh, uh, Sean Things already got a good question, and now he's asking Star Wars or Star Trek. I think we were awfully yeah. clear on that one. But here's a good follow up Simpsons or Family Guy? Take Simpsons. Nice! Yeah, I, Simpsons. I like the cut of your jib, mister. Simpsons, yeah, Simpsons from the Tracy Ullman days. That oh, was where yeah. I got into At the Simpsons. At the beginning. I have a little trouble with the first season. Because um, You're watching it now. I, no, because Dan's doing a little bit of uh, the, you know in finding the voice for Homer. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. first version of that is very Walter Matha, who I love. Right. Yeah. But oh, now I've got 19 additional years of this Homer. Yeah. So when I hear that Homer, it's oh, who's that guy? I don't yeah, want that guy. 100%. Just like Sexy Marge. I have a problem with Sexy Marge. Oh, Every now and then they'll dress her up. Marge is a mom first. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to see sexy yeah. Marge. The the one that screwed me up was the breast implant one. Hello. Because all of a sudden I'm like, Hello. Whoa, what? I, what? Why that would you turn off? No. At all. All right. So yes, yeah, definitely. Simpsons. Are you? I, uh, I love the family. I mean, Family Guy's great. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. given the two, Simpsons. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. Oh yeah. 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 Kidding me? Plus, I enjoy a plot and a story. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, uh, I know you've been working on your Larry King. And, oh, uh, yes. We're, I promised I would do the show this time in under seven, hours. two hours by seven o'clock. So I've got, you've got, you know, a solid ten seconds to come up with your Larry oh, King. okay, yes. Take 20. I'll take 20. All right. <clears throat> you ready? Yes. Okay. Yes, I will go on record. Cats have made me sexually aroused since I was 12. Ball sack, New Jersey. <laughs> and he brings it home, everybody. Boom. Thank you so much. Kevin, thanks so much, dude. It was awesome. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, wildly continued sex success to you and sex. Thank you. To I you and yours. Continue. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, thanks a lot. Man. It really it. meant a lot you being here. All right. I'm going to say goodbye to my uh, my peeps, my, my folks, my followers, my... That's Twitter.com speak, followers. Um, this was, uh, was a hell of a day for me, starting off uh, in New York and, and flying back on very little sleep and, uh, and then meeting two uh, wildly interesting people from two wildly different uh, walks of this particular life. Uh, who I hadn't met before and meeting them and then doing the show and I can't thank you enough for uh, allowing me the opportunity to uh, conduct these sort of experiments and um, uh, continue with the contest. We had a, a couple of winners that we're going to be uh, shipping the CD out to a little off the top. I've teased a couple of um, uh, audio clips from my next Stand Up Live CD called What Are the Chances? And uh, so look for more of those clips also on Twitter.com. I want to thank uh, our executive producer, Jason Calcanis, our crew. We had uh, Alex and uh, Kenny and Josh and Jason McIntyre out there. There they are. Actually, Kenny was in here as floor director. <laughs> Thanks for that, you guys. Um, and uh, we also had uh, uh, Jamie, of course, inside the room, and uh, Kate Shorter was back with us this week. There's Jamie, who so hates to be on camera. <laughs> and of course, Sammy the Machine Levine, who uh, is our, our, well, he's our Uber, our Uber champ. Yeah, where's the Sam? There's the Sam camp. He's our Uber champ. He was at a film festival and came all the way in for this and made it in time. And, um, Anyways, thanks again very much. I've asked all the uh, uh, followers and fans of the show to come up with a, a sign-off in which uh, that I can, uh, can say goodnight officially, and not smoothly, because I never want to do that, but just something that makes it feel like uh, we've come to a close instead of just winding down like I'm doing now. <laughs> so keep those suggestions coming in, because sadly we've yet to come up with a winner. Uh, and until we do, and I'll know it when I see it, I'm simply going to say thanks very much for allowing us into your uh, computers, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a bunch.